Every Shocking Human Experiment Explained, Stanford Prison Experiment. In 1971, psychologist Philip Zimbardo conducted a controversial study on the psychology of imprisonment. College students were randomly assigned roles as prisoners or guards in a mock prison. The experiment, intended to last two weeks, was halted after six days due to the guards becoming abusive and the prisoners showing signs of extreme stress and anxiety. It highlighted how easily people can abuse power when placed in certain roles. Little Albert Experiment in 1920, psychologist John Watson conditioned a nine-month-old infant dubbed Little Albert to fear furry objects by pairing a white rat with a loud noise. The child came to fear anything furry. Watson wanted to show that emotions could be conditioned, but he never deconditioned the child, who likely suffered lasting fear and trauma, highlighting the study's highly unethical nature. Milgram Obedience Experiment Yale psychologist Stanley Milgram's 1961 experiment tested people's obedience to authority. Participants, ordered by an authority, authority figure were told to deliver increasingly powerful electric shocks to an unseen person. In reality, no shocks were given, but most participants obeyed, with many going up to the maximum 450 volt level, highlighting humans' disturbing willingness to inflict harm when following orders from an authority figure. Project MK Ultra. This was a CIA mind control program that illegally experimented on human subjects from 1953 to 1973. It used drugs, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, and other methods in an attempt to develop mind control techniques, but ended up severely harming many subjects. When exposed, it caused a huge scandal. Much about it remains classified to this day. The Monster Study. In 1939, speech pathologist Wendell Johnson conducted an unethical experiment on 22 orphan children. Some with normal speech were subjected to negative speech therapy being belittled for every mistake in an attempt to induce stuttering. Many suffered long-term psychological damage and some retained speech problems throughout their lives. It revealed the power of negative reinforcement. The Aversion Project in apartheid era South Africa during the 1970s and 80s, the military conducted forced therapy on gay soldiers involving electroconvulsive shocks and sometimes chemical castration in an attempt to cure their homosexuality. It left many with severe trauma and dysfunction. The project was only exposed after apartheid ended. Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment from 1932 to 1972, the U.S. Public Health Service conducted a highly unethical study on rural African-American men with syphilis. They were misled and denied proper treatment, even when penicillin became available, so researchers could observe the disease's progression. This caused needless suffering and deaths. It has become a byword for racist medical exploitation. The Monkey Drug Trials In 1969, psychologist Harry Harlow isolated monkeys and got them addicted to drugs like morphine and cocaine to study dependency and withdrawal. The monkeys were basically tortured with sensory deprivation and induced addiction. Many consider it one of psychology's cruelest and most unethical experiments. Guatemala Syphilis Experiments From 1946 to 48, the U.S. infected hundreds of Guatemalans with STDs, particularly syphilis, without consent to test penicillin. Subjects included soldiers, prisoners, mental patients, and sex workers. The study only came to light in 2010 after a historian uncovered hidden records. It damaged trust in medical research among developing nations. The Pit of Despair in the 1960s to 70s, researcher Harry Harlow put baby monkeys in total isolation for up to a year to study maternal separation and depression. The monkeys emerged severely disturbed. One isolated chamber was grimly dubbed the Pit of Despair. The cruelty of these experiments appalled many, leading to reforms in animal research ethics. Operation Midnight Climax In the 1950s to 60s, as part of Project MK Ultra, the CIA hired prostitutes to lure men to safe houses where they were surreptitiously dosed with LSD and other drugs, then observed through one-way mirrors to study the effects. Several men endured terrifying trips and psychological damage without ever giving consent. It was a major violation of rights and ethics. Surgical Experiments on Enslaved Women In 19th century America, Surgeon J. Marion Sims conducted experimental operations on enslaved black women without anesthesia or consent. He claimed black people couldn't feel pain. The women suffered terribly and many died. While advancing gynecological techniques, these brutally racist experiments ignored human suffering in the name of medical progress. Holmesburg Prison Experiments 
From the 1950s to 1970s, dermatologist Albert Kligman used prisoners at Pennsylvania's Holmesburg Prison as guinea pigs to test hygiene products, dioxin, LSD, and other drugs, sometimes injuring or permanently scarring them. Subjects were mostly black. Their racial identity and captive status were exploited. The studies were extremely unethical and entailed medical coercion. The bystander effect experiments. After the 1964 murder of Kitty Genovese, where a woman's cries for help during an attack reportedly went ignored by many witnesses, psychologists John Darley and Bib Latain conducted a series of experiments to test people's reactions to emergencies. Their studies found that the more bystanders there are, the less likely people are to intervene due to diffusion of responsibility. While influential in psychology, some felt the experiments exploited unwitting subjects and trivialized human suffering for an oversimplified point. The conditioning of Mary Cover Jones. In the 1920s, psychologist Mary Cover Jones conducted a pioneering yet troubling experiment in behavior modification on a three-year-old named Peter who had a fear of rabbits. Jones exposed the boy to rabbits while feeding him his favorite foods to create positive associations and decondition his fear. While it worked in advanced behavior therapy, many find the experiment manipulative and question whether proper consent was obtained for this vulnerable toddler. The Hawthorne Factory Experiments. From 1924 to 32, the Hawthorne Works Factory in Illinois commissioned a series of social experiments on workers to study productivity. Variables like lighting, work hours, and rest breaks were changed to see the impacts. Productivity went up, seemingly due to workers knowing they were being observed. But the studies misled workers, failing to obtain consent, and some questioned the validity of the Hawthorne effect they claimed to find. The studies are seen as breaching research ethics. Japanese Unit 731 during what to? Japan's Unit 731 conducted gruesome experiments on POWs and civilians, including vivisection, amputation, germ warfare tests, and forced freezing to study hypothermia. Thousands died in agony. After the war, the U.S. gave the doctors immunity in exchange for the data. The lack of accountability remains controversial, as does the use of data obtained through torture. The Robber's Cave Experiment in 1954, psychologist Muzaffar Sharif took two groups of preteen boys to a summer camp, putting them into rival groups to study conflict and cooperation. The experimenters manipulated the groups to foster hostility, then brought them together on shared tasks to lessen tensions. While influential in social psychology, the study involved deception and emotional manipulation of children, raising ethical red flags. David Reimer After a botched circumcision damaged infant David Reimer's penis in 1965, psychologist John Money had Reimer castrated and raised as a girl to test theories of gender identity. But the experiment failed horribly. Reimer never identified as female and suffered immense trauma before later transitioning back to male. He ultimately took his own life. The case revealed the damage wrought by imposing false gender identities. The Facial Expressions Experiment in 1924, psychologist Carney Landis conducted a disturbing experiment on the origins of facial expressions. He painted lines on subjects' faces and had them enact various expressions. He then exposed them to disturbing stimuli like pornography and distraught animals. Most disturbingly, he had subjects decapitate a live rat while filming their expressions. The unethical study treated subjects as objects and forced them into a cruel situation, all for questionable scientific value. Demikhov's Two-Headed Dogs In the 1950s, Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikhov created two-headed dogs by grafting the head and front limbs of one onto another's body. At least 20 dogs were subjected to this. They only survived a few days, enduring a cruel surgical ordeal. While advancing transplantation science, many see the experiments as animal torture masquerading as medical research. The Learned Helplessness Experiments In 1965, psychologist Martin Seligman conducted foundational but troubling experiments on learned helplessness. He subjected dogs to repeated electric shocks they couldn't escape. Eventually, they just whimpered and endured the pain, not trying to escape even when they could, demonstrating learned helplessness. But the experiments were very cruel. Seligman also tested the theory on humans, though less harmfully. The human experiments faced accusations of undue distress as well. CRISPR BABY EXPERIMENT 
In 2018, Chinese scientist He Jiang Kui claimed to have created the world's first gene-edited babies using CRISPR technology. Jiang Kui said he modified the embryos of twin girls to reduce their risk of contracting HIV, but most scientists condemned him for recklessly experimenting on human embryos without proper oversight or consideration of unintended genetic consequences. It's still unclear if the experiment actually worked or what impacts the babies might face. The secretive and premature use of gene editing on humans was widely seen as dangerous and unethical. The San Quentin Prison Experiments In the late 1960s, dermatologist Howard Mybick and others experimented on prisoners at San Quentin, applying pesticides to their skin to test toxicity levels. Prisoners were paid a small amount to be human guinea pigs. Mybach claimed they were volunteers, but critics argue prisoners can't truly give free consent. The studies risk the health of a vulnerable population without proper safeguards.